If I ask you to name a country partly occupied by pro-Russian forces, whose capital was allegedly the target of a Moscow coup, where airlines refused to fly because of Russian missiles, a country seen as a battleground for the future of democracy in Europe, then you'd probably say Ukraine. But that's not where I'm talking about. Because while the world's eyes are fixed on Ukraine, all of this is happening just next door in Moldova. And as conflict rages, Putin could be fighting a hybrid war, seeing it as the best chance to bring a pro-EU nation under Russian control. So if Russia was to invade Moldova, how many days could it resist? Maybe one day, maybe some hours. Political instability in Moldova right now is adding to the West's fears. Here in the capital, Chisinau, there have been protests since last year. Like a lot of people around Europe, they're angry about the rise in energy bills since the war in Ukraine began. And this is already one of the poorest countries in Europe. In fact, there was so much anger over the cost of living that the Prime Minister was forced to resign in February. But here's the thing. Moldovan and Western intelligence says that Russia is behind these protests. They say that agents from Moscow are inciting, exploiting and encouraging these demonstrations, even paying people to protest because they want to create a conflict, a coup, a revolution in Moldova to destabilize the country and bring down the government. There are even reports that this Russian plot is being run from the UK. And it's all happening right now. At this protest in Chisinau, Moldova's head of police said his officers stopped a Russian-backed group from causing mass unrest. Top Moldovan officials accused Russia of fighting a hybrid war in their country. Today, Moldova is facing hybrid threats. Protesters who are paid and supported by Russia who try to bring violence on our streets. The term means using military and cyber warfare alongside a propaganda and disinformation campaign. Ukrainian and American intelligence agree that Moscow is doing that right now in Moldova. And secret documents leaked in March seem to reveal a plan to install a pro-Russian ruling class in Moldova by 2030. We all always knew that Russia have a, a sort of plan to, to keep Moldova in its sphere of influence, to support the pro-Russian political forces in Moldova. And this all comes at a time when Moldova has its most pro-EU government ever, led by President Maya Sandu. But remember, Russia denies that it's up to anything in Moldova. They in fact claim that the real disinformation is coming from Moldova's pro-EU government and that this is all part of the West's anti-Russia agenda. But wait a minute, why is Russia so focused on tiny Moldova? Why do they think this is the perfect nation for their hybrid war? Almost certainly because of Moldova's history. Its origins go back to the Principality of Moldavia. From the 18th century, numerous empires fought over the region, and eventually Moldavia was divided. The northern section, Bukovina, became part of the Habsburg Empire. Today, that area is split between Romania and Ukraine. The western section unified with the neighbouring region Wallachia in 1859, and that region now forms the basis of the modern Romanian state. And finally, the eastern section became Bessarabia as part of the Russian Empire in 1812. That region is what we now call Moldova. So would you say in a sense that Moldova has sort of been caught between both the Russians and the Romanians? You would be right in thinking that it's a contested periphery, that empires, the Russian Empire, the Soviet Empire, were kind of claiming and reclaiming this territory. The Russians are even closer than you think. They aren't thousands of miles away on the other side of Ukraine. They actually have forces inside Moldova with a huge amount of ammunition. Let's go back to those maps again and let's talk about Transnistria. We need to take things up to the present day. Bessarabia declared itself independent following the Russian Revolution, becoming the Moldavian Democratic Republic, then forming a union with the Kingdom of Romania. But not everyone agreed with independence. This area, called Transnistria, stayed part of the Soviet bloc. Then in 1940, the Soviets retook the Democratic Republic and joined the country with the Transnistria region. Zoom forward half a century, and after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Moldova declared its independence in 1991. But the leaders of Transnistria didn't recognize the new republic. So the new government declared martial law and a civil war started. The Transnistrians received weapons and soldiers from the Russians. And the war ended in 1992 with a ceasefire. Today, Transnistria remains a breakaway pro-Russian region 
inside the borders of Moldova. It's now home to 1,700 Russian peacekeepers, and its leader has repeatedly said Transnistria should join the Russian Federation. And so for Vladimir Putin, it could be the perfect place to turn a hybrid war into a conventional military invasion. But the Russians say they have no intention of invading Moldova, that in fact, it's neighboring Ukraine who wants to invade Transnistria and recently tried to assassinate its leaders. And it's not just Transnistria that many see as a weak point in Moldova. Another region, Gagauzia, in the south of Moldova, just elected a pro-Russian leader who wants to improve ties with Moscow. And Moldovan authorities claim that that vote was rigged, with police seizing the ballot boxes. The population in the region is also pro-Russian. They still are uh, in support of Russian Federation. Others want Moldova to unify with its EU neighbour, Romania. About 40% of the public back that idea. And Moldova's president, Maya Sandu, has said it could happen if a majority supported it. The division of public opinion about Moldova's future, its long history of empires fighting to control it, and the fact it's only been a modern independent democracy for 30 years, means there are concerns about how resilient the country is to Russian hybrid war. And if Russia did invade, most think that the resistance would wither far quicker than in Ukraine. The Ukraine army is not in very good shape. It's quite um, vulnerable to this kind of threat. So if Russia was to invade Moldova, how many days could it resist? Well, I think it's too optimistic to talk about days. <laughs> yeah, to be realistic. Maybe one day, maybe some hours. For now, the war in Ukraine is a useful buffer for Moldova, protecting the nation by keeping Russia's military busy. And arguably, what's seen as a weakness for Moldova, its history and its plurality of ethnicities, that's also its strength. The idea that a variety of different groups can live under one nation, a country that wants to be part of the European Union. Within that plurality and within all of those questions about who we are, the Moldovan kind of political project is a way to kind of answer those questions to say we believe in this kind of state. Moldova's history reveals the divides of the European continent over centuries and its competitions over territory, culture and language. Right now, it has its most pro-European government ever. Perhaps it's no surprise then that Russia is targeting it with a hybrid war. But the stakes for Europe and the West are high. Even if a ground war doesn't come soon, it represents a European democracy facing disinformation and sabotage. With Europe and the United States so focused on Ukraine right now, will they forget its neighbor and risk breaking a key link in the West's defense?